Hey everyone, this is Ryan from Badgerland Birding. Today I am excited to be unboxing my first smart bird feeder. Derek and I have tested out a lot of smart bird feeders, but it's normally been Derek who's been doing the actual testing. So this is going to be the first one I'm going to be taking a look at by myself, and I'm really excited to uh, see what we have here. So here is the large box that it's in. This particular one is from a company called Arcantos, and it's a company that's trying to get a more affordable smart bird feeder to the public. So it's going to be interesting to see if it holds up to some of the other ones that are a little more pricey. So let's get this thing opened and we'll see what we have in here. All right, so here is the actual packaging of the smart bird feeder. So looks pretty nice. We always check for these boxes if there's an erroneous bird on there. So like something that's never gonna come to a standard bird feeder, like a hummingbird at a seed feeder or something like that. And this one's just got the little cartoon birds. So that checks out. So let's get this thing opened up. And we'll see what actually comes with the product. All right, so this is one that has an AI recognition in it, and it came with a little manual about setting up the entire product, it looks like. So that's good. Looks like it has the general information on how to mount it. Looks like on this one, there's a green jay. That's kind of cool. Green jay, cardinal. Looks like zebra finch on there. All right, we'll set that aside for a minute. That's the general feeder portion. It looks like there's a lot of little things that it comes with to help set up and mount it properly. So this is the main housing for the bird feeder. So it's kind of the bird feeder itself. All right, there we go. We finally have it out. So this has a two solar panel roof on it. And we've had mixed results with solar panels on these because especially during this winter in wisconsin it's been cloudy so if it's cloudy you don't get any charge on this and your bird feeder runs out of battery quick so we'll see how that one does with the two and then here's the general feeder with the housing there's the camera right in the center so seed reservoir looks like it's okay size i think it's bigger than some of the ones we've tested so that's actually good and then here's kind of the dish, the tray that the seed would end up falling into. I do like the color of it, I have to say. I like that it's all blue. That's nice. This is part of the mounting. So that can get drilled into whatever you want to put it on and then hold the feeder on there. Got drill stickers that come with, so that's good. You can be very precise with how you're drilling. Here's one of the perches with some little mounting screws. So that one you can extend out, it looks like a little bit farther. And there have been some that we've tested where it's actually not in the focus of the smart bird feeder when the birds land because it's just a little bit too far away or too close. So hopefully this one is just right. So I'm going to be testing all of this out and we'll see how it works. Like I said, it's the first one I'm testing. So I'm really excited to see what I get on it and see how I like this particular product. All right, I've had the bird feeder for a few days now. I've been checking out the app a little bit, but I haven't had a lot of time to just sit and watch it. I will say I've been getting tons of notifications like every couple of minutes because the feeder's getting a lot of activity. So uh, I didn't really like that anymore, so I turned them off. But if you want to leave them on, every time it detects motion, it tells you that there's motion. So let's pop the app open. We'll see if anything's happening at the feeder right now. Like I said, it's been getting pretty consistent action, and there is a chickadee right now. So let's see, oh, now he's gone. I've tested out the AI a little bit on it already and sometimes the AI gets it right, but not very often. And sometimes it will even get things wrong in a new way every time. So I remember one time it said that, I think it was a red winged blackbird or a chickadee or something it was an auklet and then it said it was something else ridiculous. So we'll take a look at some of the other stuff that's been visiting. So there's a house finch, that's cool. 
One thing I do like is that it keeps these pictures saved. And so if you missed anything that was at your feeder, you can just go back to it and take a look. There's a squirrel. There's a cardinal. That's pretty cool. Red winged blackbird. Oh, chickadee's back. Identify the chickadee. Come on, you can do it. Nope. Oh, come on. Nope. The chickadees are a little fast too, so something that would just sit on there and maybe eat for a little longer would probably be better. But it did try to identify chickadees before. I think that I have it saved someplace, my identification attempt. And it looks like I got a picture of it. So it took a picture of the chickadee flying away. That's kind of cool. A neat picture. American tree sparrow. Oh, chickadee's back. Come on. There's no way I got that. Nope. There's chickadee. I don't think it's going to get it when it's on that side of the screen. Come on, you can do it. Just give me something. Okay, Eurasian bullfinch. That's not the one. So as you can see, the AI is not that good. I mean, you don't really need the AI if you can just identify what it is. So I obviously know it's a black cap chickadee. But if you're really new to birding and bird watching and bird viewing, this could mess you up a little bit if you trusted it. Let's learn more about this bird that was in my feeder. Eurasia, no, nah, it's not even sort of close. I mean, I guess it kind of looks like the female, but just no. And like I said, one of the birds, I tried doing it again, and it gave me a different answer that still wasn't correct. But it has gotten the house sparrow before, and I'm wondering if that's because that's an actual European bird. It seems like the European birds are what pulls up here more than the United States birds or North American birds. All right, I've had this smart bird feeder, which is actually the model is called the Cuckoo, up for about a week now. Got to experience what it's like having it. I'm going to go through five different categories and kind of go through how the product was for each of those and then give an overall opinion at the end of the uh, five categories. So the categories are setup, durability, AI, user experience, and image capture. So starting with the setup, there are some things you have to do with both a skill set of getting this attached to the Wi-Fi and understanding how the app works on your phone, and then also a little bit of skill with just being able to mount and attach the different pieces. So ours personally was sent with the screw holes actually not correct. So we weren't able to attach it from the base to how the mount was supposed to be, which caused problems for us. So the bird feeder would twist around a little bit and at one point got knocked off of where it was sitting. We talked to the company about it and they said that if that were to happen, somebody could contact them and then they would get the problem corrected. They said all the other ones are correct and that was just a manufacturer error. Um, so hopefully other people won't run into that same issue, but for us that was a little bit problematic. Uh, otherwise, it just took a little bit of using a drill to get it set up and uh, it wasn't too bad on that front. Even if you didn't really know how to do that kind of stuff yourself, you could probably find someone around, a friend or a neighbor or a family member that could help you get that set up, even if you don't have that skill set. And then uh, in terms of both attaching it physically and then connecting it to Wi-Fi, there are videos online actually on Amazon that they put up that can help you figure out how to do it. They pretty much go step by step and they're pretty useful to seeing how you're supposed to get this connected. And then the app actually walks you through a pretty clear step by step process on how to get this connected as well. So moving on to the durability, like a lot of the other smart bird feeders, this one is made mostly out of plastic. So I didn't have any issues with the plastic for the time that it was out there, but I could definitely see if there's an animal that really wanted to go at it, like a raccoon or a squirrel or something, they could damage it pretty easily with it being plastic. Now there aren't a lot of smart bird feeders out there that are actually made of anything but plastic. So this is pretty routine. So it held up fine for the time it was out there. 
Uh, I don't know what would have happened if it was out there longer. One thing to keep in mind too is part of the durability is also the battery life. This one has two solar panels on it instead of just one. I didn't have any problems with it dying and it stayed fully charged the whole time. So that was nice. Again, if it was up for an entire year or something in Wisconsin where we don't get a lot of sun sometimes, it could potentially have been an issue, but it just wasn't up long enough to see any problems with that. So for the time that it was up, it worked well with that two solar panel system. Now we have to get to the AI portion of it, and the AI was all over the map. So it occasionally did identify things correctly. I think it was like once or twice it got them, but then a lot of times it was completely wrong, and uh, other times it was only marginally wrong. So there was one time it called a house finch a purple finch, and then there were other times where it mistook things like red-winged blackbirds for species that aren't anywhere near uh, the United States. So that was a big problem with it. If you're looking for a smart bird feeder that's going to use AI correctly to actually identify the birds every single time, we haven't found one yet that does that. So it's pretty routine to have these sort of AI issues. Um, but if you discard the AI portion, if you just know what's already in your yard and you want to look at it and not have anything be explained what species it is, then this bird feeder definitely wouldn't be an issue with the AI. So every time something came to the bird feeder i knew what it was already it was cool to look at so i didn't really need the ai so what i'm trying to get at is if you want something that's going to be what you rely on to identify your birds a smart bird feeder in general probably isn't going to be your go-to because none of them seem like they do that great of a job of it yet maybe it's something in the future that will work better but for now uh the ai is definitely not the best Moving on to the user experience, for what that app did lack in AI capability, it was actually pretty entertaining to use. Not only could you interact with the bird feeder by just watching the birds, but there are also a few other features to note. So it does have a squirrel alarm on it. So I got squirrels from time to time. And the first couple of times I used the alarm and it would freak them out and they would jump off the feeder, which was kind of funny. But then as time went on, they sort of got used to it. And then there's also a voice feature, too, where you can actually say things through the app if you wanted to yell at your squirrels, which Derek has done on some of the other bird feeders. They use the Bird Lover app, which is the one that this one does. So that's kind of amusing. You can also capture your media as well, which we'll get to more in a little bit. Uh, there's also an interesting feature where you're supposed to be able to share your feed with other people so that they can also watch your smart bird feeder. Now, we unfortunately didn't really get the time to test that out, but it's something that the app says that you can do, which is kind of interesting. So you could, if you had family members that wanted to see your friends, you could give them access to that feed so then they could also see what birds are visiting your feeder, which I think would be great for somebody who just wants to keep an eye on the birds. There's a lot of like live feed cameras out there on YouTube and stuff like that. I think it'd be kind of a cool way to do that, but with your own yard. And then getting to the image capture side of things, I thought that the image capture was pretty solid. Occasionally, I got a little bit of fogginess on the lens, but overall, I got some really interesting footage and uh, pictures of the birds that were coming. You get that unique view with their face kind of into the bird feeder. So I liked that. And I like that it did take a lot of pictures of the stuff that was there. So even if you didn't actually see it live, it did still work to get pictures of the birds so you could go back and see what they were. So it was nice that it had a little library. So even if you miss something, you can check it out still. One of the other things that's worth mentioning is it does give notifications for every time there's movement at your bird feeder. So sometimes this was really convenient and sometimes it was really irritating. So sometimes I would just be inundated with notifications if I wasn't around and couldn't check it. But then other times if I was waiting for something to show up because I wanted to get videos or pictures, it was nice. So if you want to turn these off, you can actually just go into your settings, go to the app and then select off for notifications or no notifications, which that takes care of the problem. And then if you want the notifications back on, you just do the same process and turn them on again. So it's really not that difficult to do, which I did a couple times where when I was trying to get footage, I would turn them on. And then when I was just going about my daily life, I would turn them off. So it's up to you really, if you want them on or off, it will give you notification every time that there is motion, which if you have a very popular bird feeder in your neighborhood uh, for the birds, you will be getting a lot of notifications. So overall, this smart bird feeder did a pretty decent job when I had it outside. It did what it was designed to do, captured a lot of different birds, let you know when the birds were visiting, captured other animals as well. The AI is definitely spotty on it. So don't trust the AI as a be all end all for your, the birds in your backyard. Uh, but overall, the 
aspects that I tested were pretty good. Most of them worked well. Um, something else that's worth noting too is that the company assured us that it won't be excessively priced at any point. And they said that they're really trying to make it affordable for people to buy. And we actually have a coupon as well that we'll be offering that will take that price even lower for people that want to buy it. So that's something that did set this one apart as the company is very involved in the process of making sure that people are happy with the product. They said that their customer service line is always open. So that's something to note as well. And overall, it is kind of in the range of a lot of those other smart bird feeders in terms of how the performance performances with that bird lover app and with how it's just generally created so it's a decent smart bird feeder at a more affordable price so if that's something you're looking for and you don't mind the ai it could definitely be the uh, product for you so as always thanks for watching we'll see you next time on badgerland birding